Today we're going to talk about a very common event that causes serious chest pain and shortness of breath. What's up guys? Welcome back to Patho and Chill. Today we're going to be talking about pulmonary embolism. So how exactly does a pulmonary embolism even occur? And that is via a deep vein thrombosis. So, okay, a new term, what is a deep vein thrombosis? And so that exactly is whenever there is a blood clot that forms deep in your legs that then moves up uh, via the systemic circulation. But the first off, let's kind of begin with how exactly this blood clot forms. And that is because of chronic venous insufficiency, which is basically whenever the valves in the veins of your body um, especially in your lower extremities, um, those valves stop functioning correctly, and by doing so, they allow the blue. The, and by doing so, they allow the blood to start pooling down there. And as you guys may know, whenever the blood starts pooling, then it is at an increased risk to clot. And so basically, now this clot is going to be able to move around up your usually the femoral, the iliac, or various other calf veins. So it's going to move up uh, your body and it's going to go into the heart via the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. And so from the right atrium, it's going to go into your right ventricle. And once that right ventricle squeezes and it really pushes it into the pulmonary arteries, then it might get dislodged into those pulmonary arteries and cause a blockage that will then result in this pulmonary embolism. So. Uh, for, for this deep vein thrombosis, there is a triad known as verkose triad that comes with venous stasis. So that goes back to the blood pooling, right? Because the, the blood is staying still, it's the stasis. Um, that's gonna allow for it to form clots. The second part of that triad is hypercoagulability. So the, once again, the blood is very um, prone to becoming coagulated and, and form a, a blood clot. So that is the second part of the triad. And lastly, we have vein injury. So whenever veins are, are damaged, they are more likely to hold, uh, hold blood in there. And that's kind of adding on to the ability for the blood to pull in those veins. So now jumping into potential symptoms for a pulmonary embolism, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, chest pain, and no, this isn't angina, but this is more of a pulmonary chest pain. Um, shortness of breath, also, also known as dyspnea. And finally, we have tachypnea, which is an increased rate of breathing. So, you know, that's just that, that faster tone of breathing. And so finally, let's just jump into the types of treatment or management that there could be for this. So an anticoagulant will prevent uh, the likelihood of the blood to clot if, even, if it's already pooling there. And finally, there's also a thing known as an inferior vena cava filter that as that blood clot is moving up and it reaches that inferior vena cava, it obviously will not let it go into the heart to prevent uh, the occurrence of a pulmonary embolism. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Go check out our other videos. I've been doing a couple others on the cardiovascular system, including atherosclerosis and an aneurysm. So make sure you go check those videos out. Hit the subscribe button down below. And as always, I will see you next video. I hope you have a chill day and peace out.